Welcome to Diversity CRE TV and hi, I'm Niles Reyes and my guest on this episode is Carrie Ann Buchanan. Carrie Ann serves as Assistant Real Estate Manager, Diversity, Equality, and Inclusion Leader and Women's Network Co-Leader at CBRA Philadelphia. Ms. Buchanan performs periodic property inspections, responds to tenants' requests, and prepares reports for vendor invoices and tenant charges. Ms. Buchanan is a U.S. Army veteran and served two tours overseas. The first tour was in Germany during Operation Enduring Freedom. The second tour was in Iraq during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Ms. Buchanan is also a certified spiritual life coach who takes pride in empowering her clients to achieve a fulfilled and harmonious life. Carrie Ann is a graduate of Columbia College with a Bachelor's of Arts in Business Administration and received a Master's of Science in Industrial and Organizational Studies from Grand Canyon University. I spoke with Carrie earlier, and here's what she had to say. Carrie Ann, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. No problem. So uh, you are fresh from, fresh back from Costa Rica. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this morning. Literally. <laughs> Literally, yes. <laughs> Got so home so at three o'clock. Yeah, no, I, I know. You sent me that text. And I texted you in the middle of the week. And I, and I remember we had a conversation, and, and I think you did say you were going to be out of town. Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember when I sent you an email that said, you know, I'll be out of town for a little while. Um, but I didn't know exactly when you'd be coming back. Right. So I texted the other day, you know, when you get that still alive, question mark. It's like, I haven't heard from you. Um, are you okay? You know what I mean? You right. start worrying everything. Yeah, day, so. I decided to unplug and just kind of just vegetate in the vacation, yeah. um, you know, after this past year and everything right. like that. So right. we, that was my first vacation, real vacation since then. So I unplugged. So, yeah, when I turned my phone on and saw, are you still alive? I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But uh, Costa Rica is a great place to do that, too. So yeah. So oh. on that, I'm a little mm -hmm. jealous. Um, all right, so let's just go ahead and just jump into it. Uh, you know, first I'd like to start off these interviews talking about your roots, you know, where you're from, where your family's from, et cetera. Um, you know, you could take it back to the motherland, the islands, uh, the south, wherever you want to start, you know, let me know where, where people are from, where your family's from. Okay. So, yeah, my family is originally from Jamaica. Um, oh, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my mom's Jamaican. My mom's Jamaican. So okay. So uh, we got that in common. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. So I came here when I was nine. Okay. And um, so we came in uh, 89. Okay. Um, and my, you know, it's just me, my brother, and my parents. Um, right. my, my mom's family is here more. Uh, more of my mom's family is here than my dad's. My dad's family is still very strong in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, my grandparents. Uh, of course, they're all all from Jamaica, but we do have some family members that uh, live in England too. So we're like England partially too, the England yes. Jamaicans. Half the families in England too. <laughs> yes, yep. yes. Yeah. So um, uh, and um, that you know that's mm. pretty much it. With it's just me, my brother, my mom, and dad, and I have three dogs. Okay, and your your family came to PA, or did they start in New York no, first? No, we came to PA. My okay. grandmother started here. I'm not sure how she found little old Norristown, Pennsylvania, Norristown. but yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, she found Norristown, and then my mom came over. My grandfather was in New York, but then yeah. he moved to Florida. Um, but so we kind of like visited New York, but we actually mm. decided to stay here right. in Pennsylvania versus going there. So grew up in Norristown. Mm. I went to Norristown High. Norristown High. Yes. Shout out Norristown High. Uh, yes. <laughs> town. Um, <laughs> graduated in 99. Okay. And then uh, decided to go off to college. Well, tried to go off to college. Mm -hmm. um, but because I have a two-parent uh, household, uh, financial aid was a little hard for me to get because, yeah. my, you know, I didn't qualify for it because mm -hmm. my parents made, you know, too much money. So I decided to join the military. Mm. Um, so I joined the Army National Guard. Army and, uh, National yes. Guard. We got so many <laughs> commonalities here. This is why I had you on the interview about that. How do you carry it on? Yeah. Okay. So um, I did that. I joined in 2001. Um, mm -hmm. So I, you know, went to work at a bank first and then decided to join that, the National Guard. 2001 left, um, left right after 9-11 happened. Mm. I remember my recruiter calling me and saying, it's not too late. Do you want to back out? 9-11 happened. You didn't, you know, leave for basic training yet. You can. And I was like, nope, let's let's move forward. With this. Really? Yeah. So I went, Wow. Um, went through basic training. And when I came back, I was home for a week and got orders to be sent to uh, Germany on a, a, a mission there. So we okay. did some kind of uh, law enforcement in Germany. I guess they had some, you know, backlash from everything that happened in 9-11, so they needed some reinforcements over there. So we went over, 
Um, I did nine months in um, Germany, then came home, and then decided to pursue a uh, college for nursing. Um, then I got another deployment orders to go really? to Iraq. Yeah. So you went twice. You went two different deployments. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, went through, did all my prerequisites for nursing. The only thing I had left was my clinicals. And then I got orders to go to Iraq. So I left for Iraq in 2005. No, sorry, 2006. And um, while I was in Iraq, I decided to finish school or change my major, uh -huh. and I did business finance okay. while I was in Iraq. Okay. Um, I got my undergrad there. Hard. Where? In uh, Online. I did online. So in I did, Iraq? Yeah. You graduated in Iraq? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I finished it. I finished it. Um, of course, I didn't walk because I couldn't, you know, come home to walk. But yes, I got my degree while I was in Iraq. Um, wow. You know, my downtime, you know, there was not much to do. Like, you're in the middle of the desert, yeah. um, you know, besides convoys when you're actually doing your mission yeah. um, in, you know, guard duty or whatever the military, you know that. Yeah. Whatever the military asks you to do, you're going to do it. Right, so right, in between exactly. that, I did classes. Wow, that's um, an amazing mm -hmm. start to this interview. Just let me say that <laughs> much. I mean, um, yeah, and for some people that, some of you that don't know, uh, I also served in the Army National Guard. I was based in North, North Carolina Army National Guard. I also joined in 2001. Okay. How old were you when you joined? I was 21. Okay. Well, shy of 21. Okay. Let me say I that. Was, I was 17 at the time, so my mom had a sign for me. Mm -hmm. And um, where did you go for basic training? Fort Jackson. Oh, South, South Carolina. Carolina. Okay. Yes. I, went to, um, I went to Fort Benning in Georgia. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, and that was a rude awakening for me, but it definitely helped, you know, set me on the path that I need to be on. So moving forward. Okay, so, all right, where do we start? Okay, so you... Norristown, military, you are literally walking across the sand dunes in Iraq mm -hmm. to get your degree. Yes. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, so you returned back to the States yep. with mm -hmm. the degree in hand. What happened after that? I was at that time, I was actually working at the Boy, uh, Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts of America, Creative okay. Liberty. Um, yeah. In we have well, they had an office in Philadelphia and one in Valley Forge. OK, so I came back to working with them. I was already there for uh, Prior to going into the service, I was there eight years with them because right. I, I think I started working with them when I was like 19 or something like that. Right. Um, so I came back, started working with them, um, took a different position called a, uh, d a district executive where I started to serve and recruit in Philadelphia. Okay. So my areas that I covered was Southwest, West Philadelphia, North Philadelphia, and South Philly was my geographical area of recruiting. Where recruiting I would, Boy Scouts? Boys, re, yeah, recruiting Boy Scouts. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, that's how okay. we get kids to join. Oh, okay. Is, yeah, there's a okay. position that goes out and do what they call boy talks. You go into the school, you talk to all the uh, boys, try to hype them up about joining into the Boy Scouts, recruiting right. them in there. Kind of like the military. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. And it's so funny. The Boy Scouts is actually uh, shaped off the military. All wow. of their ranking system is it's very, very much influenced by the military. Awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. So it was like leaving one military to going to right. another. Right. Um, I also did um, a lot of fundraising, you know, for having the kids being able to do any kind of activities while they go going camping and stuff like that. Right. So that um, is where my... Uh, love for Philadelphia came about, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, I didn't grow up in Philly. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I was in Narsound, so, mm -hmm. you know, the suburbs of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But I came out, I hung out in Philly, partied and stuff like that. Yeah. But getting to know the community was what, what I did that during the um, Boy Scouts. Yeah, yeah. definitely awesome. Mm -hmm. well, you know, let's show a little respect to Norristown. Everybody knows yeah. Norristown can be a little <laughs> Norristown can be a little rough there. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not like yeah. Norristown's on the main line. It's, Norristown it's, has its, its own not. special dynamics. It too, definitely so. does. I mean, people um, call it Little Philly. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Definitely same makeup. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, yeah. so then you're at the Boy Scouts. So okay, let's let's fast shift forward. into yeah, fast forward into, into commercial, commercial real estate. estate. Yes. How'd you get in? So I. Or how'd you get exposed? Um, uh, was. It just fell into my lap, really? to okay. be honest. I was ready to, to shift gears in my career, and I started looking at jobs, and there was a listing on Craigslist. <laughs> yes, what? of all places, Are Craigslist, yes. <laughs> and it didn't say what company it was, so I just submitted my resume, and I was like, ah, if something happens, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, I went about my self, you know, life, uh -huh. submitting resumes everywhere else. Yeah. 
-hmm. And all of a sudden I get a call and they were like, hi, you know, we see your resume on, on Craigslist, you, you know, we'd like to, you know, do an interview. And I'm like, right. okay, fine, sure. So we get the interview, we go through everything. And I was like, by the way, you know, your Craigslist doesn't say what company this is, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, it doesn't? And I'm like, no, it just right. tells you the position and everything else. Right. And so that was office services supervisor. Okay. So I was like, okay. Um, she tells me CBRE, so I look up CBRE before, that was the phone screening. So right. I look up CBRE before going into the, um, interview and lo and behold I did six interviews six interviews later I got hired and I've been there now five years oh going wow. on six August will be six mm -hmm. that's an amazing story okay okay before we dig into that I first want to tell the audience if you're trying to rec recruit diversity the Craigslist <laughs> approach probably isn't the best way okay that's an outlier all right? you don't get this kind of talent off of Craigslist that was yeah, definitely an outlier it was I normally don't apply on Craigslist it <laughs> yeah. was literally just the Hail Mary toss I saw the thing and I was like eh, why not but yeah. you know LinkedIn is usually the yeah, yeah, indeed we, yes so that's another thing yes you know we didn't have maybe mm -hmm. LinkedIn wasn't that um, prevalent in those right. days. Right, yes, that's correct. Um, so I guess some people just use Craigslist. Mm -hmm. and I think people use Craigslist for everything, but right. I yeah. never knew they used it for jobs at one of the top brokerage companies in the world, right? That's kind of <laughs> crazy, but you, they got you there, and yes. you know, that's that's mm -hmm. amazing. They're, they're, good to have, they're uh, that much better off having talent like you, obviously, from your background and your story. Um, so, all right, so you work as an assistant real estate manager. Mm -hmm. How did you go from the uh, your entry role to where you're at now? There was a, a structure reorganization in CB and they actually, um, we had, I think three uh, office services supervisor at the oh. time and we were like shifting offices, shifting the dynamic and they um, eliminated one position. Right. So m me being the newest person in, that position went away and um, my, the, the department had now reached out to me because we've had conversations just, you know, walking through the office. And he's like, I heard what happened. Um, we had a conversation and he said, well, how do you feel about joining property management? And I was like, well, I don't really know much about property management. Yeah. I own uh, residential real estate. So I'm in, uh, you know, rentals, but I actually have a property manager. So right. I was like, I don't do it myself. <laughs> But I was like, hey, why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, let's just try to see where it takes yeah. me. So I got into it and um, just been soaking up the information as what I can, you know, as the admin at the time, um, you know, real estate service administrator, soaked in as much as I could. And then uh, last year in April, got promoted to assistant real estate manager. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, and and that, that leads me to ask this question next. And, and first, I want to make a statement because I've been trying to recruit diverse talent. Mm -hmm. And people know that I have this platform and I'm doing the things that I've been doing in the industry. And so they reach out to me and say, hey, Niles, I got this uh, you know, um, opportunity. Do you know anybody? And so I'll go to my network and I'll ask people if they want to work. And I'm having trouble because sometimes these positions they're sending me are entry-level positions, kind of like the one you had. Mm -hmm. And I'm having trouble because I'll show these candidates these entry-level positions, mm -hmm. look, and I'll say, uh, now, mind you, they met me, and they said, oh, I want to get in commercial real estate. I really want to, you know, get into the industry, et cetera, et cetera. I said, okay, cool. But because it's not a highly covered a job, mm -hmm. they say, uh, I'll let you know. And they never get back with me. Or right. um, they'll say, I don't know if I can take, you know, that because there's a little bit of a pay cut right, when you right. first take an entry level mm -hmm. job, uh, and these are sometimes individuals that just got laid off during Corona. Right, and they'll come yeah. to me and say, "Hey, I'm looking for a job. I want to get an industry. I see what you're doing." Mm -hmm. and I'll say, "Okay, cool. Get the get the reply or email. Here's one." It's like, uh, not that one. Right. So, what would you say to people that are trying to get in, and it's not actually the job that they may have thought they wanted to do, mm -hmm. what would you say to them as far as taking that entry-level job? I feel like, you know, we have to start somewhere. <laughs> Everybody got to start somewhere. Right. And I know we we all have this high expectation. Especially in these days. Yeah, right? Yeah. The the new generation. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> yes. Um, but 
for me, I was like, I had to start somewhere, you know, and even taking, going from the office service supervisor, right. I was in a supervisor role. Mm -hmm. I had to take a step down going back to an admin role yeah. to continue my, pursue my career in right. real estate, you know, commercial real estate. I thought about it. Yes, the ego hit me and yeah, I was like, oh, we're going from managing people mm -hmm. and having the one that puts out the rules and you know, tell everybody what to do to right. going back to being told what to do right. and having somebody manage. I mean, I still had a manager, you right. know, in the other position, but I had more autonomy mm -hmm. in the admin role. You know, you're supporting somebody. So there's not that much autonomy, right. but I had to swallow that ego mm -hmm. and that pride and being like, this is what I need to do to progress. Right. Then it, you know, I'm I'm gonna do that. You yeah. know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta take that step back just to propel forward. Yeah. And surprising enough, it propelled me forward even tenfold. You know what I mean? Exactly. I always feel like once you put the work in, you'll be blessed in some way, shape, it or will. form. Exactly. Um, it'll multiply. You know, as long as you have the energy behind it and you have the we're and all about what you want your future to look like, yeah. then you can always progress to that. You know what yeah. I mean? There's nothing stopping you. You hold the limits to yourself. Exactly. And your career. Exactly. And and to your point, um, if you have that go-getter mentality and you are as thorough as you think you are to mm -hmm. get, get top jobs, right? then look, taking a backdoor entry mm -hmm. isn't that bad. Now, I don't know what people's timing is, but this is a marathon, not a sprint. Right. And if you really want to get in the commercial real estate mm -hmm. industry for whatever reason, um, you know, that backdoor entry may be your only way to get in. Yes. Um, and I think it's actually a great way to get in any company because you can actually see the dynamics and behind the scenes and right. who's doing what and what teams you may want to join mm -hmm. or what verticals you may want to operate in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, my background was in appraisal and I was in grad school and most most grad students aren't trying to get into appraisal. Right, right. right. But that was my only way in. Mm -hmm. And that job was going to teach me a skill set in valuing mm -hmm. properties. That's yeah. all I needed to know. Right. And I did it for almost three years yeah. until I said, okay, you know, uh, I can transition. Mm -hmm. And that's how I made that transition. Mm -hmm. But mind you, when I people reach out to me, hey, I want to get in, I want to get in, I say, okay, here's an appraisal job. Uh, I don't want to do it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. all right, all right, all right. So, um, you know, it, I always feel like people that really want to do it are just wanting to do anything to get in and will show that effort. So, with um, a caveat to that, though, I will yeah. add real estate commercial real estate, we both know it's not that easy to get into. It's not. You know, it's who knows who. Exactly. Um, I hate to say it, but it's the truth. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, it's always referral hired. And referral. if you, I feel like sometimes you might have, like we're just saying, you might have to take that step back to get in it, at that lower yeah. position, but you can always move up because there's so many different ways for you to grow in commercial right. real estate. There like is. you just said appraisal. I'm property management, you got brokerage, you got yeah. so many different avenues that you can branch out to once you're in the industry. Right. So I just feel like that, you know, that's just something else that it's so hard to get in. If that's something you really want to do, you definitely got to take that hit. Yes, yeah, so I find myself talking to both sides, the executives looking to get talent. I also find myself talking to the talent. Like, mm -hmm. look, both you guys and gals need to yeah. adjust your expectations mm -hmm. here to let them be in the middle. Yes. And then once we do that, figure it out, we can take off from there. Correct. So, all right, so moving along, um, let's talk about your, your involvement in uh, your current role at, at, at CBRE. You're mm -hmm. involved in a couple of things. Yep. Uh, first, let's start out with the ladies, the uh, women's ERG. Yes. How long have you been leading that for? I have been leading that now three years okay. and been involved five years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what do you usually, what, what type of events or initiatives are you guys um, putting in? Putting, in, uh, putting forward. So our women's network is all about empowering women, yeah. um, also being inclusive at the same time. So we do Im invite men to come into our you know, program and come to our mm -hmm. events. But we have events that empower uh, women to progress in their career and just right. feeling more you know, confident in themselves. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's, I hate to say it, but you know, a man would apply for a position and he may just have 50% of the qualification, but for a woman, we feel like we need to have 95% okay. before we would apply for it. So it's just, you know, it's just giving them that confidence that even if you have 50%, you're just as good to go ahead and apply for that position. Yeah. And just showing them also the different avenues 
within CB or not even within CME commercial real estate that women can be part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just we need to have admin roles. We we can be brokers. We can be, right. you know, project managers, mm -hmm. um, showing them different avenues of where they can go within real, mm -hmm. uh, commercial real estate or even outside of that. Um, right. Just trying to empower everybody to continue to grow and, you know, uh, level up to the next level, you know, yeah. however that may be. So I know we have an event coming up at the end of the, the month. It's okay. called Level Up. Level and we're, up. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> level up, level up, level up. Yes. Level up, level so we're up. trying to <laughs> talk to, we have a panel of women that's okay. going to talk about their awesome. career path mm -hmm. in commercial real estate, right. what they had to do to get to the next level. Because we know, once yeah. again, commercial real estate is a man's world. All right, right. And it's a little harder for us females, yeah. you know what I mean, to move up. Um, but sometimes you just, you know, you can't wait for somebody to recognize your talent. You yeah. gotta like be that little aggressive and step oh, forward yeah. and being like, "Yo, I'm ready for this. Yeah, for I sure. can do this. For sure. Give me that shot." You yeah. know. So we have a, a group of um, four powerful women within CBRE yeah. that has definitely moved up the ranks with, you know, their with things that they've done and then allowing them to be recognized to be promoted up. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to, for um, you know, show everybody else that they, that it's possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? To all the women that it's possible. And even in this male dominated world, we could dominate too. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. And, and uh, just for the audiences, uh, just so they know, I've attended, a few of your events. Yes. Where one time I went from Center City, Philadelphia, all the way to Radnor to attend an event that you were hosting. And the reason I'm sharing that is because as a man, you can attend these events mm -hmm. as well. I was trying to see what you guys were doing. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. because I was starting my own diversity stuff and I wanted to see, I respected your leadership and I wanted to see what you ladies were doing, uh, as well as I want to network with you ladies as well. Mm -hmm. And I think um, sometimes individuals can get a little sidetracked and say, oh, well, it's for the for the women, or right. yep. oh well, it's for the Hispanics, or oh well, it's for you know, insert your ethnic group there, and people will x themselves out. Right. But because it is for different people, um, that may be a reason to get involved. Mm -hmm. And you know, women are taking over. Women are crushing the game right now. <laughs> commercial real estate. Um, my my uh, interviewee before you is Kiara Hill. She is a bright star, as you know. And as so, I've heard a lot about her. Yeah, so, you know, why would I not want to make a connection right. with her? Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. We have a brief announcement giving you, the viewers, an opportunity to support this program. If you've enjoyed this type of content, which highlights the achievements of a diverse set of professionals, you can support by clicking on one of the payment app links in the description below. I'm a black man with a plan who teamed up with another skilled brother and his wife, and we've decided that there's not enough stories being shared of successful and progressive diverse individuals. For instance, if you haven't caught on already, I'm from Philly, and if you're from Philly too, see if you can answer these three questions. Who is the most popular black actor from Philly? Okay, who is the most successful and well-known rapper to recently come out of the city of Philadelphia? Last one. Who is the most famous and highest paid comedian to come out of Philly? Now you didn't even have to be from the city of brotherly love to know the answer to those questions because anyone that's been paying attention to the American culture for the past decade knows who these fine gentlemen are. And it's a testament to the talent in the city I call home. Now look, I'm not trying to name drop, although I just did, but it helps provide context for the next set of questions. Check this out. Can you name one minority individual from the city of Philadelphia who has served or currently serving as a chairman or CEO of a Fortune 500 company? Who is the most successful minority banker, venture capitalist, and or entrepreneur to come out of Philly? Currently, who is considered one of the most distinguished minority educators, lawyers, accountants, doctors, or my personal favorite, commercial real estate developer in the city of Philadelphia? Don't know why well, I don't know either, but I'm on a mission to find these individuals, interview them, and ensure that we all know who's who going forward. Okay, now that you get my drift, here's your opportunity to support the ongoing efforts to highlight a diverse set of professionals and to inspire the next generation. Eventually, we're looking to go across the country to speak with you or someone you know at the top of their game in their respective industry and has significant community involvement please contact me on LinkedIn right now. Remember to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications for the latest videos on this channel. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the video.
I think it's a great segue to talk about diversity initiatives and, and ERGs um, and kind of bring the audience up to speed as far as uh, passing the torch. Yes. So for those that don't know, uh, I started, I co-founded uh, a diversity task force at uh, Seabury, Philadelphia, and um, I can give you the details later, but uh, I passed the torch after I left that uh, particular office over to Carrie Ann. Um, so how's it been going? It's been going well, okay. yes. Okay. Um, big shoes to fill. Can <laughs> <laughs> I just say? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> your event that you had last yeah. year, everybody's still raving about that really, event. Really? Yes, oh, I man. feel like, you know, when we're talking about events and I'm like, so I can't pull off a knob <laughs> and just letting y'all know, especially in this pandemic, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but no, it's going well. Um, we did a fundraiser last year where we raised eight thousand dollars for wow. Philadelphia school district Amazing. for to provide for uh, technologies yes. because you know um, with the pandemic a lot of um, black and brown kids can't afford uh, yeah. technology yeah. the laptops and them. yeah you yeah. know the laptops and all that stuff at home mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to do something so the task force decided to vet a couple different uh, nonprofit organizations because awesome. we wanted to make sure that every dollar was going towards a child exactly and you know we've decided we're going to uh, educate the staff about the culture differences yeah. you know because um, I am a firm firm believer and I think this came from Maya Angelou, one of my favorite. Maya, yes. rest in peace. Um, when you know better, you do better. It's something right. that she said to Oprah, and Oprah yeah. puts that out there. Um, and I might, I'll add a little bit to it. When you know better, you have the potential to do better. Mm -hmm. you, have the, you have to then make the choice. Right. So without the knowledge, you can't possibly attempt to do better. Right. So I feel like you know our staff, um, we all know is Caucasian males, yeah. and um, we're trying to diverse, diversify that, whether that be women, mm -hmm. you know, black and brown, right. Asian, Hispanic, yeah. Yeah. you know, we're, we're change, trying to change the culture within yeah. C, uh, CRE, which we're here for. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're educating them. We're having that uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. I've had quite a few since you've <laughs> passed the torch. Yes, yes. Um, and I will continue to, and the, the team is continuing to. So we're trying to do some big things. It's a little difficult with the mm. pandemic because we want to be more in person. Right. Um, but we've been doing a lot of virtual. We also had a summit um, this at the beginning of the year. You were part of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I had you on there as a guest speaker. Um, so I've, there's now been, I think, six other diversity task force started throughout CBRE. Um, they also hired a chief executive, uh, yeah. chief diversity officer well he's now a chief responsibility officer okay. so um they've broadened his um his scope of work yeah. to not just the diversity but also the ergs right. um and a bunch of other things to keep cbre accountable right. for the changes that we're trying to make within the company yeah company's not there yet but they're definitely doing some work oh, and I mean, you yeah, know it's sure. it you know last year propelled a lot of companies to to yeah, make that change course. Um, I would say CBRE had, you know, the ERGs and did have a diversity before, but it wasn't as pronounced as it is now. Exactly. Um, and more and more, I'm getting calls from other, you know, uh, markets across the mm -hmm. country that's like, hey, I know Philadelphia had this going on for, yeah. you know, two years now. Yeah. What have you guys been doing? How'd you guys do this? So I have to say thank you to you yeah. <laughs> for being to for being that person that wanted uh -huh. to, you know, take that brave role and yeah. stepping up to the plate and going yeah. to our our leader here in Philadelphia and saying we need this change yeah you know um, I have to say me personally thought about it before um, and I was like it's not gonna change and you know I'm it's not I'm glad you said that because this is a great I could I could it's a great pivot point right here so the starting the task force right so I'm glad you said six other cities are wanted to start one and that all came from a vision that I had, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that vision was it was birthed from an experience that I went through at the company. And if no, if people don't know about that experience, they can read about it in an article that was featured. I was featured in in Biz Now on their Next Gen series <clears throat> of how I covertly infiltrated the industry. You can read about that experience, and instead of instead of cowering or complaining or <clears throat> ignoring the issue, um, 
I leaned on my military experience and background to help me, you know, strategize how I can defeat this enemy, mm -hmm. you know. And in doing so, I came up with a vision, plan, strategy, whatever you call it, and I put, you know, initiatives and goals. Um, I set them and put my best foot forward. Mm -hmm. And I went out on a journey, and I went to two different um, ERGs that two different ERG um, conferences that were being held. The African American and Hispanic. I went there just to see what was going on. Okay. Understand the flow and the process, and I can say that uh, CB had before George Floyd had great intentions, great movement, a lot of enthusiasm behind it. And I supported, and I felt supported, but I just went through this one incident mm -hmm. that somebody like myself should not have, have gone through. But I did. And right. my grandmother always tells me, you got a testimony now. You know what I mean? Right. You got, you got yeah. a testimony. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. So I decided, mm -hmm. I said, you know what? These ERGs are great. They're amazing. But there needs to be something at the local level. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are in real estate, right? It's all right. about location, right? Like, yeah. what are we doing in Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. Other cities, other places, other regions have their own structures and their own di dynamics. Mm -hmm. But what are we doing in um, Philadelphia? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not my city. That's going to change right. if I'm here, mm -hmm. right? Especially after that experience. And so what happened was um, I went out and I started recruiting people to join this task force. I pitched the task force to other people. And this is before George Floyd. This is before yeah. all the, the wokeness that's been going on nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that respectfully. But the temperature or the, um, it wasn't as the awareness was, was, was different back mm -hmm. then. You yeah. know, it, 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 what I was doing was cute and it was nice. And um, I was in a great company. I was supporting it. But it just wasn't top of mind in, in front of other initiatives. So uh, what I it was a vision, and I went full steam ahead. And I was telling um, Kiara that I treated this like it was a deal, um, and I worked very hard. And I kind of like the fact that I'm able to pass a torch to you because I think we have two different management and leadership styles, mm -hmm. but we both have similar backgrounds, yes. similar upbringings, yes. uh, military experience, mm -hmm. but two different styles. Mm -hmm. And I think going back, everything is always like a military analogy. Going back to the military. I think my style is more unconventional. I think your style is more conventional. Mm -hmm. So what happens with the unconventional, the unconventional is somebody that does the reconnaissance, you put behind enemy lines, does the diplomacy behind the scenes, little resources, um, out there on a shoestring budget, you know, against all odds. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I was pretty much doing and had this event and got a lot of attention. Now, mind you, there was no budget, and I was always lying every time somebody asked me what the budget was. I was like, uh, 2000 3000 That was just what I was up to, but I had a bunch of other things planned, right. and I was recruiting. As well as I was looking at people and saying, look, we got this has to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. So I was very in your face about it, right. and that was not the norm mm -hmm. or the trend in those days. Right, correct. But I was also trying not to be the angry black guy or disgruntled or look like, so I had to be very... Uh, corporate and strategic mm -hmm. and casual about it. But I was in your face. Even mm -hmm. so much so, even if you were a diversity recruiter, I was like, look, I don't know what you're doing in other cities. Right. I told you about this. But in Philadelphia, we do things different here. Right. And yes. I'm leading the charge, and this is how it's going to go down. Right. Mm -hmm. So you either going to get... And they look at me like, oh... Step up to the plate. Adam Mullen put me aside like, I think you might want to <laughs> calm that down a little bit. We're on the same team, right. man. But I was but like, he look. appreciated it. Exactly. We actually had a conversation about that. Yeah, and yeah. I was telling him, look, what, 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 what's what been going on, mm -hmm. I appreciate. But in Philly, my city, we're taking us to another level. Yeah. We're not playing no games. Yep. We are a task force. I named it a task force for a reason. You can call it a group. You can call it a team. You can call it a powwow, but when you call it a task force, mm -hmm. that has that has a different tone. Mm -hmm. That means something's going to get done. Right. And that's why I named it a diversity task force, so people will know somebody about to come in here, kick some stuff down, you know, hold people accountable, yeah. et cetera. And that's what, that's what it is. And passing to you the more conventional, and I, I think this is the best way for it to transition, because I feel like if I still let it, it still would be a little... I'm a little bit of a brute sometimes, but I, I, I appreciate this pass off for you because you're more conventional. I feel like you can handle the flow of people right. and the way things kind of move and, you know, 
your leadership style lends to that more caring and conservative manner for the uh, diversity initiatives. And I'm not trying to say it's oh, a lesser of an experience not taking it that way or impact, right. but mm -hmm. I feel like to get it started, you need to meet behind enemy lines to get mm -hmm. it done, put right. all the effort in. Yep. And then once it comes to that um, um, capacity and flow, then usually the unconventional passes off to conventional, and then you man the, you yeah. know, the mm -hmm. operations, and then everything's flowing. Mm -hmm. um, Fine. I believe that's the transition we made in this uh, diversity task force. So I appreciate your your being involved and um, you know keeping the movement going. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I have to still uh, get, you know let you know where your grassroots started and where it yeah. is now. So since you had that conversation with Adam, we have hired um, 27 staff members. Yeah. I think it is, and half of them are diverse. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, we're, that's we're, amazing. Yeah, we're, we're, you know, he's yeah. you. You started that, and okay. uh, Adam's continuing it. Of course, I, I'm, I'm pushing him behind. Like yeah. you said, you, we have the different dynamic and leadership. Yeah, and you know, sure. you can always lead in different ways. Yes, you can. Um, and I'm not. I am still in your face, but not as, if you want to say, aggressive yes. as you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? I might come around and being like. Hey, so <laughs> yeah. what about this? Right, you know what right. I mean? But I, I, I learned in the military yeah. um, with my experience is sometimes when you have an idea, if you flip it and make it seem like it's their idea, mm -hmm. it gets done quicker. Yes. So that's something that I've learned in the military yeah. with, you know, being in the position I was with, I was always a lot of brass yeah. and brass and sergeants, right. you know, sometimes I don't want to listen. So yeah. you always had to be like, hey, this is your idea. Yeah but it wasn't really. So that's what I'm kind of still doing now. Mm -hmm. um, and Adam's great because he does take the torch of being in your oh, face when it comes to the, to the, to the brokers. So we make a good team when that, that comes, you know, if I have anything, I go to him and being like, hey, I need, you know, I need this, I need that or whatever. And it, it, we work together in making it happen. Okay. So it's definitely a prog work in progress. Of yeah. course, we're still not there yet, you know, and I know I'm sitting here saying, oh, we hired 27 people and half of it diverse. But if you know anything about commercial real estate, that is great progress right now. Oh, yeah. They're you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So um, we still have a lot of ways to go, though. Yeah, but for sure. Everybody does. So um, I guess we'll go ahead and just wrap this up. Uh, so I just want to thank you a lot for coming out here and, you know, sharing your story with us. Uh, sharing our sharing your story with us and sharing the experiences we both had at the same firm. We were there for um, when I was there, and I really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your day, fresh off the plane from yes. Costa Rica. <laughs> See the tan. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again. You're welcome. Carrie, no problem. We appreciate you, and I wish you the best in your career going forward. All right, thank you, and I wish you the best for all of this. I hope yeah. you know the change is coming. Uh, yeah. I'm glad to be a part of it again. Yes, working with you on that. So I appreciate it. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, we'll have you back.